Welcome back to the table and another of our On the Road to Gen Con sort of previews, yeah. if you will. We were lucky enough to get a copy of Age of Innovation. This is a Terra Mystica game. Yeah, but they might as well have just called it Terra Mystica 2. Because yeah. this really does build on the foundation of Terra Mystica. And I'd like to be, I'm happy to say that for diehard Terra Mystica fans, it doesn't change what I think people are going to love about this game. It just improves upon that foundation. It adds so much more. And I think uh, while it's going to largely feel like Terra Mystica or, a, you know, a little like Gaia Project, obviously, yep. there are some things they did here that make this feel to me. And by by the way, neither of us are giant Terra Mystica players. Sure, we've both played we've the game played. enough to I've know. played more Gaia Project, as I think I think you I have. have. I have too. I've played more Gaia Project than Terra Mystica. But I'm able to kind of recognize some of the influences that Gaia Project had coming back into Terra Mystica, and then some of the things that they introduced that are brand new. And, and one of the big things they've done to change up this game is with variability. Yeah. There's a ton of variability now, not only just in your powers, which you always did have asymmetric powers, but now your asymmetric power comes in the form of this faction tile that can be matched with any different player board. So you're no longer going to have a very specific terrain that's linked to a very specific faction, you're actually going to be able to draft these and kind of build your own faction board. And that to me already is a huge positive step forward for the franchise. Yeah, I have to say, and this is kind of a side note, but also to emphasize what Ryan just said, the draft that is used, and again, the draft is sort of the a variant, if you will, but I think yeah. any player who's ever played the game before is going to embrace that a variant from the get-go. Right. But yeah. you actually, they include these cards, which is a nice touch, that represent each of those faction boards. And then you have this card out, and then you randomly assign one of the actual uh, faction, or what do they call these? The, the faction tiles. Faction You've got your tiles. player your player board cards and your faction tiles. Not and, to mention a bonus. Yep, and your round bonus Round tile. bonus tile at the beginning of the game, and everyone drafts those, so you're kind of collecting a group of things that has been built every time you play the game, which is really cool draft. Yeah, the and they, they even have an expert version of that draft too, where you lay them out in three separate piles, and when it's your turn to draft, you choose one. So if there's a round bonus tile that you really want, you can draft oh, that really? first to start with it, but then you might not get the player board or the faction tile that you really want. And what you've got when you do this is, is some factions work really well with some of the starting, or some of the faction, yeah. uh, some of the faction tiles work really well with the player boards and they can create some combos that you just didn't get in the base game because you were always set with the same combination. Yeah, and the variability doesn't end there. It does start there, but the player boards also have space for the innovations and the innovations is. is another big part. There's the name. Exactly. If the innovations come out on the separate and new board and these are things you're going to be able to acquire throughout the game using an innovation action, but you have to have acquired books what are books, you say? Well, books are a new kind of resource, if you will. It's yeah. not one of the standard resources, but they're going to be things that you collect throughout the game sparingly, yeah. very slowly. Uh, but once you have some books, you're able to use that knowledge that you've accumulated to take one of these tiles and add it to your board. You can actually have up to three innovations. And this, yet again, enhances your civilization to be able to do some very unique things. Yeah, and what's great about those innovation tiles is they come out randomly. And you'll notice by the colors there, each one is kind of assigned to a different color book. So you have some that are going to require yellow books, which are the, the banking books. Some are gonna do the law books, which is blue. They're random, not only in their location on there, but there's also a whole stack of tiles that we didn't use. So every time you play the game, you're going to have a different set of innovation tiles, and they're going to cost different types of books as well. So you're going to have a very different game. We're playing a two-player game, so there's not that many in the display, but there's actually little, yeah, there's little like, I don't even know what you'd call them, tiles that extra, slot in there. Extra board that goes in the middle there so yeah. that you can expand and have more tiles. And at the bottom of that same board, you have the competency tiles. These again are tied to the whole idea and theme of gaining knowledge in this game. These replace the wonder tiles, I think yeah. they were called from the original, and there are more here. So you're gonna see some that are familiar to the ones from the original Terra Mystica, but Oftentimes they've been tweaked a little bit and then you're going to see all new ones because I think there were eight and now there are 12 here. And again, 
they just get randomly assigned to these different locations so that when you take one, you're actually able to take a combination of those books that we were talking about and going up on those tracks that everyone knows and loves. Yeah, and this science board over here has been completely changed. This was like a cult board, they called it in Terra yeah. Mystica. This now represents the four different versions of science that you're going to be kind of learning as you progress your civilization. And this track has changed. There's still points that are gonna to go to the person that's the highest, and there's still going to be some power charging, yeah. which is one of the basic things you're doing in the game. But you'll notice you now need these keys. In the original game, you could earn these keys by building cities, which is kind of the same, yes. but you only needed them to get up to the highest point value spot. Now you need them a little early before you even get to the income. Yeah. So it encourages you to try to build these cities early and you have these spots down here where you're gonna be sending your scholars, which are not really a new resource, they're kind of a rethemed priest that you had before. Yes, but they now, don't come as frequently, I don't right, think. Right, they as don't, as they're priests. hard to get, but you can send them out there to go up on these tracks, to get your power charge, to get your points at the end of the game, and things like that. Not only that, they've tied this science track into your round bonuses. Yeah. Every round you're gonna have one of these tiles, and just like in Terra Mystica, there is an action that's gonna give you points. If you do that action in that round, you get points. A big part of the game is maximizing when to take your actions to maximize those points. But then at the end of the round, you're gonna get a bonus for how many times you've gone up a track. So like this one that we're looking at, gives you one coin for every one space you've moved up that brown uh, engineering track. This one is gonna give you a worker for every three spaces. So if you make it up to the six, you're gonna get two of those scholars at the end of the round. So that's another incentive to kind of plan how you're going up these different tracks. Yeah, and while that is similar to how the original Terra Mystica worked, all these tiles, a lot of them, again, are a little different, a little yeah. bit tweaked, and I think, I imagine, there are more of them in the game. Yeah, the game offers a lot more, and one other thing I wanted to mention about the books, because, like I said, it is an interesting mm -hmm. economy that's added to the game. You're going to gain them here with the competencies, you're going to spend them here for the innovations, and then you can also spend them here. There are variable, again, more variability, tiles that come out here where you can spend books, just like yeah. you can cycle power to do things throughout your turn, you can spend books to do some pretty significant actions here. And there are, like I said, a number of these tiles here, and again, they're first come, first serve, so once someone uses them, they're covered up. But then you're spending those books. That means you're not gonna be spending those books on innovations, right. things like that. So there is some give and take. It is definitely Terra Mystica at its heart. It's just as tight and as yeah. restrictive. When we played the other day, we looked at each other for the first round and said, well, we're not getting anything done. Yeah, it's, it's tough <laughs> to get things done in this. Um, the variability does help. It does let you kind of build your board out the way you want to. And there's one more point of variability that I want to point oh, yeah. out. And that is these palaces now. When you build your palace now, when you can upgrade one of your guild halls into a palace, you get to draft one of these four palace tiles that are over here. And these actually come onto your board. They have a little holder here. You actually place them and now you have another point of variability, another unique power, or it could be an action, it could be something for income, it could be immediate scoring, that's going to be just for you. Of course, you can only get one of these during the game, but the four that are out here are going to be random as well. So you're not even gonna see the same four palace tiles yeah. every time you play the game too, which is a huge difference. It's crazy. Honestly, I would say variability is easily the name of the game here, along with a lot of the little things yeah. that we pointed out here. But if you're a Terra Mystica fan, if you play this, I can't imagine you're not going to just think this is the better, newer version of Terra well, Mystica. It, it is definitely the better version. I mean, they've done a lot of quality of life adjustments. They've done a lot to enhance the two-player game. Yeah. And they've introduced something really cool that I think helps speed the game up in the form of these white neutral buildings. You can earn these on your turn. Some of the competency tiles give you neutral buildings. Some of the innovations give you neutral buildings. They let you put these out as your pieces they count to the power you need for cities they count as the total number of buildings you need for a city so you could actually build a little bit faster and build a little bit more if you take advantage of these neutrals as well which i think was a really good addition to the game yeah i also think too if you're not a terra mystica fan um and you've always been wanting to try this I probably recommend playing oh, one, this. I would definitely. Now, if you're timid about jumping in, and that's why you haven't tried, maybe try Terra Nova. But this one is, I think yeah. this one's going to reign as sort of the Terra Mystica game. Now, with that said, I think Gaia Project still, in, in addition to the theme, 
has enough differences to feel quite a bit different. But yeah, like we said at the beginning, this does really feel like Terra Mystica 2.0 or at least 1.9. Well, for, for, for sure, I would call it 2.0. Yeah. It, it, changes, it changes enough while keeping the core mechanics of what people love about Terra Mystica. Uh, it just brings new life into it. I'm not going to say that the old game was getting stale because it really wasn't. No. People still love it. But I think this is going to be the new the, the new adoption for sure. Yeah. Well, if you have any questions about it at all, please make them in the comments below. We'll get down there and answer what we can. Until next time, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then.